If God made the world, then who made God? Israel Adesanya asked, If God made the world, then who made God? This question echoes through millennia, reverberating against the vaulted ceilings of temples, synagogues, mosques, and cathedrals alike. If God made the world, then who made God? It's a query that has danced on the lips of countless skeptics, philosophers, theologians, and curious minds throughout history. Yet, it remains as profound and provocative as ever. This question challenges us to delve into the depths of existence, to grapple with concepts that transcend time, space, and the observable universe. Are you religious? I'm spiritual. <laughs> 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 so, so oh, that's funny. I grew up in a religious household, but when I was young, Sunday school, I remember asking, I've told this before, have I told this before? Yeah. yeah. Oh, you know the story. Yeah. Okay. I remember asking like my Sunday school teacher, well, if God made the world, then who made God? This question, who created God or all right, what is God's cause? I've heard so many college sophomores ask this question, as though this is the sort of knockdown argument that destroys theism. And they, it's just based on a misunderstanding. Look at the first premise. Whatever begins to exist has a cause. That is to say, something cannot come into being out of nothing. Anything that begins to exist has a cause. But if something exists eternally, if it never comes into being, then it doesn't need a cause. There is one eternal God who exists as a trinity of Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. God is both transcendent beyond the universe and imminent within the universe. The universe was created by God, and it exists because of God's will and purpose. This belief is rooted in the book of Genesis 1, verse 1, where it's stated, In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Let's look at the Christian God of the Bible. Now, someone may ask, well... Who created God? And for the sake of building an argument, let's just say that the Christian God and Jesus were created by a greater God. So let's call this God, God 2. So God 2 created Christian God. Nice. Problem solved. But actually, another question arises. Who then created God 2? Well, actually, the answer's pretty easy. God 3 obviously created God 2. And this creates a bigger problem. Because if everything needs a cause for its existence, then us as people could never exist. I want to address the who designed the designer question because it's the old schoolboy question, who created God? I, I'm actually very surprised to find it as a central argument in your book because it assumes that God is created. And I'm not surprised, therefore, that you call the book The God Delusion, because created gods are by definition a delusion. <laughs> now, I know, and I ought to explain, that Richard doesn't like people who say to him that they don't believe in the God he doesn't believe in. But I think that this is possibly touching a sore spot, because you leave yourself wide open to the charge. After all, you are arguing that God is a delusion. In order to weigh that argument, I need to know what you mean by God. And if you say, if there is a God, you have to ask who created God, that means that you're reduced to thinking about created gods. Well, none of us believe in created gods, Jews, Muslims, or Christians. And I think that argument then is entirely beside the point, and you, perhaps you ought to put it on your shelf-marked celestial teapots where it belongs. The God who created the universe, ladies and gentlemen, was not created. He is eternal. This is the fundamental distinction between God and the universe. It came to exist. He did not. And this is precisely the point the Christian apostle John makes at the beginning of his gospel. In the beginning was the Word. The Word already was. All things came to be by Him. God is uncreated. The universe was created by Him. One of the most profound passages in the Bible, John chapter 1, verse 1, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. This verse beautifully captures the divine mystery of our Lord. In the beginning was the Word.
This word is not a written or spoken word as we understand it. This word is the logos, the divine reason implicit in the cosmos, giving it form and meaning. This word is Jesus Christ himself. The second part of the verse, the word was with God, gives us a glimpse into the communion within the Trinity. This suggests a relationship, an intimate fellowship. The word was not only present in the beginning, but was also in eternal unity and relationship with God. The third part, and the word was God, states unequivocally that this word is not just with God, but is God. Jesus is divine, the second person of the Trinity. He is not a created being, but is the uncreated, eternal God. Uh, God, the answer is, is a timeless being beyond space uh, and time, necessary in his existence, didn't have a beginning, and therefore is the first uncaused cause. So the God of the Bible claims to be eternal. Psalm chapter 90, verse 2. Before the mountains were brought forth, or ever you had formed the earth and the world, even from everlasting to everlasting, you are God. Notice how it says from everlasting to everlasting. What the author of this psalm is saying is that if you start from this infinite period of time here and travel to this infinite period of time over here, God was always there. He had no beginning and has no end. He always was, always is, and always will be. So for people who always ask, who created God? It's important to understand the biblical depiction of God's nature. According to the Bible, God is eternal, implying that he exists outside of time. Since he is the creator of time itself, he transcends it and is therefore timeless. Hence, the concept of creation or a creator doesn't apply to God in the traditional sense. A timeless, eternal being cannot have a cause. As Keith Ward points out in his book, God, Chance, and Necessity, if one asks what caused God, the answer is that nothing could bring into being a reality which wholly transcends space-time and which is self-existent. To fail to grasp such an idea is to fail to grasp what God is. Moreover, I have given an argument that there exists such a being, namely my first argument based upon the beginning of the universe. It leads us to the postulation of a timeless, spaceless, immaterial, and uncaused eternal being. What about the question, well, what caused God? In his last speech, Professor Wolpert says, well, the universe needs a creator, therefore God needs a creator as well not at all. That doesn't follow. Remember the premises of the argument I gave. Everything that begins to exist has a cause. Something cannot come into being out of nothing. But if something is eternal and timeless, then it doesn't fall under that first premise. It doesn't need a cause. Even atheists like Daniel Dennett recognize that if eternal verities exist, like numbers or mathematical objects, they don't need a cause because they never come into being. They don't begin to exist. And the concept of God is the concept of an eternal, self-existent, necessary being, and therefore the answer is simply that God is uncaused. He is self-existent. In summary, when we contemplate the question, who created God, we must remember the biblical portrayal of God as an eternal being, one that exists beyond and independent of time, since he is the author of time. How do you think we all ended up living on this planet? Can you share why you think the way you do about these things?